back in 2016, about six or seven months before the presidential election between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, my research partner Drew Weston and I were invited in by CNN to opine on what we thought was going to happen in that election. And what we said was, all the polls were wrong, all the pundits were wrong, not only would there not be a landslide for Hillary Clinton, but she might not actually win. Donald Trump could win. And we know what happened. So the question is, how did we get it right and everyone else get it wrong? The answer has to do with three things. Associations, implicit bias, and values. It has to do with the unconscious. It has to do with how the mind and the brain actually work. Now, the first thing you have to know about the unconscious is there's no such thing as the unconscious. There's no little piece of your head separated from the rest of your head where your evil Mr. Hyde impulses live. And there's no special piece of your head where infinite wisdom really lives. The unconscious is part of all of your functioning, and it's normal. It's part of the good and the bad. And the other thing is nothing is purely conscious and nothing is purely unconscious. Everything is a mix of both. That's a lot to swallow, so I'm going to try it here and now have you experience that and demonstrate it. So here we go. I have in my hand a jar. Does everyone see the jar? Everyone sees it? Good, because there's no jar. I'm just holding my hands a certain distance <laughs> apart. But let's pretend there's a jar. And in this jar are 100 personality descriptions. 90 of them are of engineers, 10 are of artists. 90, 10 engineers to artists, OK? I'm going to reach into the jar randomly. I'm going to pull one out and read it. Ready? Creative and emotionally sensitive. Raise your hand if you think it's an artist. OK? Raise your hand if you think it's an engineer. All right, more of you guessed artist than engineer. And that was a bad guess. <laughs> now, why do I say it was a bad guess? You'll remember you were conscious of, I said, 90 people in this jar are engineers and only 10 are artists. That means you should guess engineer no matter what I say, unless I say something that can't possibly be true of an engineer and only true of an artist. Simple math, simple logic. I didn't do that. In fact, what I said is absolutely true of an engineer. The first thing I said was creative. Engineers are creative by definition. They solve problems in new and innovative ways. All the technology around us, all of those cameras, this clicker, was designed by engineers. We live as a result of engineers. And emotionally sensitive, what? They're not allowed? <laughs> OK. What I just showed you is not a simple academic exercise so that I could make my point. You have now seen, and many of you have experienced, what has been called implicit bias. You probably heard the term. Now you've had it. OK? Why did you guess wrong? It was because of your associations. You have associations. You dredge up in your head an image of an engineer or an image of artist. Go ahead. You can do that, right? And now you can dredge up in your head the uh, characteristics of engineers and artists that you associate with engineers and artists. What you are unconscious of is that those associations overrode the, the uh, math and the logic, right? Where did those associations come from? Well, from the time you're born, you are bombarded, you're innovated with all kinds of stimulation, right? Internal, external, context, everything. And you've got to make sense of this if you're going to live in the world. So what you do is you connect them. And you connect them in ways that you try to make sense out of. Those are called associations. Then you connect the associations with one another, and you have larger groups of associations. Those are called networks of associations. So that's the technical term. We can call them schemas. We can call them ways of dealing with the world. We can call them scripts. And most of the time, it works really well. But not always, because the same principles explain stereotypes, which you just experienced the stereotype. Now, in this case, the stereotype was harmless, right? The engineers, artists, who persecutes engineers and artists? Nobody, except it's not harmless. If instead of engineers and artists, I had substituted black and white, Hispanic and Caucasian, man and woman, gay and straight, Jew and Gentile, Muslim and Christian, now it's not so harmless. 
Now it's harmful, but it's exactly the same principle. So you now understand and have experienced implicit bias. Okay. Let's move on then to the next step. That's step one. And let's talk about values. All of you have values, right? Um, and I can ask you what they are. You could tell me. Well, we did a study, and we used the major measure of values, which is called the Schwartz circumplex. And we came up, you rank order values. There are 15 of them. You came up with these as the top three. You can all relate to those, right? Helpful. You all want to help others. That's valuable to you. It's important. Uh, choosing your own path. That's a particularly Western value, but you can all relate to that. And finding meaning in life. We all want to find meaning in life. So everybody relates to these. These are good. These make sense. But then we did something different. We looked at which of those values had the strongest associative strengths. We ended up with a different three. And there are those three. Maintaining security, sexual fulfillment, and honoring tradition. Well, how are we going to make sense of all of this? This is, uh, is, are they contradictory? Is one right and one, they're both right. What I just showed you earlier with the artist and the engineer is the associations predict behavior better than the conscious stuff. Remember, you, that just happened. So how do you spend your actual time? Do we have national security? Yes. Do we have national helpfulness? I don't think so. We earn a living. We work hard because we want to take care of our loved ones. We want to take care of ourselves. We want to live in a good neighborhood. We want to live in a nice house, all in the service of security. Sex, Freud was right, right? We can't stop things it's all over. It's in the media. All of you are obsessed with sex. And if you say you're not, I don't believe you. Honoring tradition, we all want our offspring to carry on our traditions. We all want to live with others who honor our traditions. So in fact, although both are true, we spend more of our time, more of our time, with the associative values, just as you were using the associations to predict artist and engineer. Now, why are some of these conscious and some of these unconscious? Where does that come from? The answer to that is that our minds and brains uh, work in parallel. It's called parallel processing. What that means in English is we do a lot of stuff inside our heads at the same time. <laughs> Now, that's in, in opposition to, or instead of, what's called sequential processing, doing one thing at a time, right? Computers do one thing at a time, but they do them really, really fast. We're not nearly as fast as computers, but we make up for that by doing a lot of things at the same time. Well, if you've got a lot of stuff going on inside your head at the same time, and you all know that you do, you can't be conscious of all of them. You have to be unconscious of, in fact, you're unconscious of most of them. And what you're unconscious of is the effects of associations, typically, as, as you just saw. OK? So we got values. We got associations. Now we're ready to talk about the election. So what we did in 2016 was we didn't ask the people that we studied, who would you vote for? What are your values? Which candidates represent your values? No. What we did was we looked at a bunch of attributes and saw how strongly associated they were with each of the candidates, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Here are the values we used. I'll just punch them all up. The negatives are scary, poor judgment, not qualified, mean, and bigot. You can see them. Positive shares my values, presidential, likable, competent leader, gets things done, inspiring, keeps us safe, security, cares about people like me and genuine. Now, they ask these things in polls. But instead of ask, finding out how strongly they're associated with candidates, they say, how important are these to you? Which candidate best represents them? No. What we did was we took each candidate and saw how strongly each of these is associated with that candidate. So now I'm going to show you the next one. There's Donald Trump in 2016. Greens are good, reds are bad. Well, take a look. The top are mostly green. Good stuff. And look at the good stuff. Keeps us safe. Remember I talked about security. Presidential, inspiring, leader all the way at the top. Bigot, well, not so good. But now look at the bottom. Likeable. Donald Trump was not associated with being likable in 2016. He's got a problem. OK? But now take a look at Hillary Clinton. OK, there's Hillary Clinton. Uh-oh. Not so green at the top. The reds aren't clustering at the bottom as they did for Donald Trump. It's a mix of red and greens. There's some good greens. Shares my values, presidential, gets things done. But 
bunch of reds too. And what's at the bottom? Likeable again. Hillary Clinton was not associated with being likable either. So the problem with Donald Trump is now canceled out by the problem with Hillary Clinton. So we, was, we were able to say, Donald Trump has a bunch of strengths that these polls and these pundits are not assessing and not recognizing. Hillary Clinton, on the other hand, has a bunch of problems that these polls and these associates are not capturing. So not only is Hillary Clinton not going to win in a landslide, she might not win at all. And we said, on air, Trump could win this thing. And I think he did. All right. Maybe we got lucky. Let's fast forward to 2020. Now we've got Biden versus Trump. We did the study again. Um, this time we didn't get on CNN. We were bumped by, um, uh, what do they call COVID, I remember now. <laughs> that COVID thing. And bumped by some riots. OK. But we did the study, and we have the data. We did it again several months before the election. And in this table, what you see, the blues are where Biden was stronger associatively. The reds are where Trump was stronger associatively. Well, Biden is stronger in getting things done, inspiring, being a leader, being likable. Trump is stronger in keeping us safe, security. You remember, that's an important value. Cares about me, competent, but also bigot. OK? <laughs> So it's kind of a mixed thing. Maybe Biden's got a little bit of an advantage, but no biggie. But luckily, we had some more data because we measured Trump in 2016. So we looked at 2016 Trump, compared it to 2020 Trump to see where his associations got stronger and where they got weaker. And that's what you got here. The blues are Trump did better in 2020. And the reds are Trump did worse in 2020. Well, he did better in getting things done and likable, except Biden beat him in both of those in the previous slide, if you remember. He got scarier, less inspiring, less of a leader, had poorer judgment, uh, shared my values less, was less presidential. And although he beat Biden in security, keeping us safe, he went down. OK? So now what we concluded was <clears throat> Biden's going to win. Now. It's still a mixed bag. The polls said Biden's going to win, so now we're in agreement with the polls. But they said landslide for Biden. They hadn't learned their Clinton lesson yet. Mm -hmm. And we said, yeah, win, but no landslide, no cakewalk. It's going to be a tough slog. And that's what happened. So what did we learn? We learned a couple of things. One is, if you want to predict what people will do, if you want to understand others, and if you want to understand yourself, you have to look at how the mind actually works. Not how we wish it would work, not how we think it would work, not how everyone else says it would work, but how it actually works. And the way it actually works is everything is a mix of conscious and unconscious processes. Just is. Secondly, the mind and the brain are organized associatively. They're not organized arithmetically. You saw that. You got that wrong. They're not organized logically. They're not organized rationally. They're not organized hierarchically. They are organized associatively. And that's just how it is. When you know that, you can understand and predict things like bias, which you saw, and many of you experienced your own implicit bias, which, by the way, doesn't make you a terrible person. It makes you a normal person who thinks associatively. Just be more aware of it. Um, you can understand how people react to values. You may hold one value. And sincerely hold it, like helpfulness, but how you behave most of the time is predicted by your associative values. And you can predict presidential elections and any other election, as I think I just demonstrated to you. You can also predict things having to do with business, branding, entertainment, pretty much anything that a human being is involved in that a human being thinks about, feels, or acts on. Thank you.